Welcome to Real Flicks Reviews. We're like a book club for people who hate reading. This week it's our theater picks. So we're doing the movie The Man of Steel, made in 2013, and we bring you movie news at the end of the program. This week we have Jonathan Charney, James Stevens, yeah. Ryan Pinball, Preston, and Jeff Michael. This week we're doing Man of Steel, and I think Ryan has the IMDb description. Right here indeed. Uh, Man of Steel 2013, director uh, Zack Snyder. Description, a young, inerrant worker is forced to confront his secret extraterrestrial heritage when Earth is invaded by members of his race. So my, my first question, what movie is this? Okay, my first question is who the hell needs a Superman movie described to him? <laughs> the, the character's damn near 100 years old. <laughs> this is, I mean, tell. people know this like they know Santa Claus. <clears throat> but you know, so I anyway, guess. It, 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 but as as far as this one, it describes sort of a portion of it, I guess. Can I can I go first just to get it sure. out? Sure. Why not? So go ahead. So this is my description because oh, yeah. just looking at about Krypton, was Krypton looks like Panzer Dragoon Orda meets Matrix with a side of H.R. Giger. I was thinking kind of a little bit of Star I Wars thrown in there. References. Where Panzer Dragoon Orda was a, a original Xbox video game, and it just. You look at it, it looks like a hodgepodge of different styles, especially with the more organic feel. It totally seems like something Giger would have done. But less uh, phallic symbols. <laughs> a lot less. Well, it's Superman. So he is a phallic symbol. It's not Flash Gordon. <laughs> and well, it, at least they dialed down, you know, the or Little Mermaid. And everything. See, I didn't get that. Um, I know, like, Aliens, he did the inside of the alien ship, you know. the that He did all the, the, uh, the any, the aliens or the extra anything involving that he did right I, I see him as a little bit more darker I wouldn't really so he did aliens versus predator why well, just probably well, I just <laughs> meant like the actual more organic feel like the way that the symbols were you know the kind of just oh, okay. the organic feel was kind of I guess Giger kind of moving armor and stuff like that yeah and did any of you guys realize Kevin Costner and Lawrence Fishburne were in this yeah, yeah, I knew that before. So I didn't. I didn't actually because I actually went in this. Well, I didn't know it before. I, I mean, I knew you did. It when I saw them. I, I know it before. That's why I was kind of a little bit more interested to see this one. I said I didn't know they were in this at all. Really? Yeah. I think I, I knew Kevin Costner. I didn't watch that? a whole lot of trailers. Okay. Well, I didn't yeah, look I didn't at any that. trailers. I just looked at the cast when they first said they were going to do this movie, and I looked at the cast list, and there was Fishburne and hmm. Costner. I I mentioned this in the movie show. I don't remember. <laughs> Neither of you do. So here's here's a question. Any of you in the, in the canon of the sh uh, of any of the series, the comic book, or what, whatever, remember his uh, dad dying? Not uh, how not he died. Well, Earth dad. Been a couple different. Oh, the Earth dad. No, I don't oh, know remember. how he died. I I, do. I heard it was like a farming accident in one in uh, one of the lores, but but I don't remember. I him. didn't actually read the the comic book to know. There's been a bunch of different ways that his dad has gone. Look, as, as far like, as canon's concerned, all I know is the. Oh no! And then he goes. Yeah, there's one of them <laughs> I know. Oh, he went no. with like a heart That's attack. Panic, man. <laughs> and um, they also did his dad die in that show that they did about Superman. Was that Smallville? Smallville. Oh, I didn't um, watch very much of that. I actually kind of got into it. it I watched like two cheesy. seasons. Um, but I saw the episode where his dad died. I watched all the way to the point the season before he got introduced to like Red Kryptonite. I don't know what season that was. Yeah, that's where it got kind of stupid. Then he yeah, I, I was half expecting Pink Kryptonite to pop out. Yeah, Ooh, I'm suddenly seriously. gay. There actually is a Krypton. I know that does that. Um, <laughs> the other thing that's interesting is how and they. And how can you live on a planet if it's made of Kryptonite and you can't even take it? That was the other thing that I was always curious about because the Kryptonite actually came from Krypton. Mm -hmm. right. From the planet blowing up, where and it came it, from? Well, it, gives, but, it know, gives off the same radiation as he would be there. So basically, it's is he's close to his the the radiation of his home planet. So that's why he, he loses all his power. Yeah, yeah. I, I kind of got that, and they kind of covered that a little bit, saying that he was he was <clears> accustomed <throat> to the Earth environment and not the Kryptonian environment. That's why he was like having all those spaz tacks mm -hmm. when he was well, on the ship. That's why they said when they were terraforming the Earth that he was going to start losing his powers. Yeah, yeah, they did kind of cover that so that was their movie. form of kryptonite and yeah. i like how they uh basically showed that superman was the one they gave all the powers to because in the other uh what is it? i think it was superman two or three the older two. ones two like everybody on that planet has these powers can yeah. fly and all this stuff but apparently yeah. 
Not in this film. Well, no, because yeah. if you watch the the end they, of the they movie, get they get the powers <coughs> eventually. Yeah, at the end of the movie, General Zog had it. What it was is just he wasn't his body wasn't used to it, so his body it was, was still absorbing the radiation. Yeah, yeah. They just they just gave a little bit more kind of a deeper logic to it. Yeah, yeah. Superman yeah. had been here long enough to uh, and had a lot of time to you know to store it up. Yeah, and to learn how to use it and not yeah. be, like you said, I have to focus. You know. And yeah. not like you know, set everything on fire or see through people's skin constantly. Yeah, that kind of that kind of did get covered in there. Um, did you have more I points? I actually liked that as a plot point. Well, yeah, I, I actually did too. I was a little bit uh, happy about that. Anyway, that was the one part I was really glad they just kind of didn't glance over it. They're actually kind of trying to get a little more realism into Superman, if there is such a thing. Yeah, well, I, I, I heard a, but a description of it when the when I think somebody I think it was Zack Snyder did an interview and in saying the the original tagline for the original Superman was uh, you will believe a man can fly. He said that you will believe that Superman could exist in the real world. Yeah, And I thought they did a pretty good job. They did, and I'll get to those some of the things that stuck out to me in a little bit. Do you yeah. have more? Yeah, well, the other one was how many times does Russell Crowe have to get stabbed in a movie? <laughs> At least eight more times. Because that was the first thing I saw after that happened. It's like, dude, that guy just has bad luck with knives. Yeah, they got, they yeah. got to round it up to like an even 50, so eight, eight <laughs> right. ten more times, something like that. No, that's that's really it. I'm, I'm kind of glad they actually added more the, the more organic feel to like how Superman got his powers instead of it's the Earth's radiation. I, I like their explanation of that a lot and, more. And how it would really affect uh, a small child, you know, growing up in that environment and how a father would react to these kinds of things and what he would try to do. You know? Which is which is something I think they, they kind of did but before, but they never had it to the level where you actually got to see, you know, the bad side. Generally, it's it, him flying or him doing something. It seems yeah. like every Superman movie, show, book, whatever I've ever seen is all the same concept. Him learning his powers. It's yeah. Superman. Then, uh, what yeah. else? I know, do? but there's no like, you know. I mean, Superman's a continuing character. That's one part of his life. They've never right. showed like half the time. I don't even know who the hell Superman's villains are because all I've seen is him Mizzle come to his power and then yeah, Luther. The, the wow. people who know who the villains are, the ones who read the, the read books the comics, or the, or yeah. Well, I think one of the reasons why they always do kind of the introduction of the characters because there's so much canon, different variation of the stories. It helps set. The background, then they can go forward. Really, yeah. I think they're running a dead horse into the ground. I think they're just trying to revamp and revamp this story that they just but need I, to continue on with, it's, and, as opposed to. Keep I going see what you're saying, but I mean, you, continuing you, character in like a like a Justice League kind of right, form. yeah. But I mean, are, do you really want them to all of a sudden like pick up off of the Christopher Reeves and bring it into this uh, Henry Cavill or Cavill or whatever? Yeah. yeah. If if it's gonna mend, they can make it mend. I mean, come on. I don't think the only or the one that was just recently. What was it? The the Superman that was most recent. Uh, Superman Returns. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't see. I think with this one, I think the reason this is I think this is a little more realistic, even for the Superman Returns. This adds a, a flair, adding to the JL movie because if you actually saw it, they had well, they had a uh, the satellite had uh, uh, yeah. Wayne Enterprises yeah. and there was a LexCor truck. There's a LexCorp yeah. truck, yeah. So I mean, they're they're definitely setting it up for for a longer payoff. Um, and I, I am, Sears and IHOP. I am curious on how the only thing I'm really curious to end up my thing is how Kryptonite would work for him, because they already showed that the the Kryptonite the Kryptons could change their ship's environment to make him weak. How would Kryptonite work? Are they oh, going to have it in this universe? Way. I think it would just kind of uh, affect him like like the environment did, where he loses his power and kind of goes into like a spastic mode or something. And the people and then from eventually the same die. Planet didn't have a problem with Kryptonite. It was just Superman. Well, his issue is because he's been he's been on Earth so much that he's used to the way his body feels. Well, uh, and you know, the Phantom Zone probably had a lot of this, you know, the the Kryptonian properties. And yeah, um, the thing I was thinking though is that. Uh, it's like the same thing as far as like uh, radiation works for us here. It's a slow burn, <coughs> and eventually we, you know, die. develop some type of cancer and die, or you know, it's a <laughs> there's a quicker path. explosion, and you just kind of yeah. yeah. Anyway, that's what I always figured kryptonite was, but uh, I'm thinking that this one would be a little bit more like um, where he would lose his powers pretty rapidly and then just kind of degrade, type thing. Anyway, yeah, but that's I'm, how I think kryptonite. Yeah, would. that's 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 later on, but yeah. um. Uh, I was gonna let Jeffy go, Jeffrey, Jeffrey. Uh, you know, Jeffrey. I like the idea of Superman. I, I guess I've realized I don't like the actual character, how they've written him. <laughs> um, 
the idea of Superman is great. In fact, I was excited to see this film because I was like, yeah, new Superman. You know, I kind of wanted it to be a little darker, even though everyone's like, that's not Superman. And I'm like, I know. But uh, I don't know. This one got a little dark. To tell you the truth, it, I thought it was like it felt like I was watching a Michael Bay show. I mean, <laughs> the Michael Bay show. Welcome to the Michael Bay show. Right. My biggest problem. <laughs> Explosions and bad CGI for everyone. Seriously. My biggest problem was that he kept. Um, Here's some eye rape. Pushing. You notice how they'd like they beat the crap out of each other and they fly through a building beat the crap out of each other, fly through a building. You know, yeah. well, that's you, like the whole movie. Well, You've got well, like an you... hour of them pushing each other through the building. And then at the very end, when he finally kills the guy, all it takes is a snap neck. I'm sorry. That's BS, dude. You're flying through buildings. Your neck's going to break. <laughs> well, Ryan, you were going to say something. <laughs> well, okay. Uh, well, shit. What do I start after that? Um, <laughs> Just I th- I, again, I thought it was, <laughs> was, was dark also. Um, I didn't think the CGI was bad. I'm not going to st- go, uh, go against the logic of the flying through buildings against, you know, steel girders and then, yeah, and twist the neck. But I, I have an explanation for that. Uh, I do, too. I'll, okay, I'll get to it in mind. Good, because it's, it's, it's one of those things, you know, like, like why does he struggle on certain things? Why does he not on other things? You know, one day he can, you know, stop... You know, and picking up an entire island, or the next day he's struggling to, you know, whatever. It's or get I nuked by an atomic bomb. I didn't think the CGI was bad, going along with just how the movie was made. Um, there sure was the a lot of, of it, CGI. though. We've basically my example. We've come a long way since Matrix Revolutions. Mm-hmm. Remember that fight? How crappy yeah. that was. Them looking at each other looked like like just a claymation of people fighting in the air. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, that's because it kind of was. This one, they actually got to look like the character. Even in Stop Superman motion. Returns, it was really on the edge of something that could be decent. But this one, I thought they dialed it in pretty good. Um, and that was a big naysayer of, of CGI. Uh, I think they were trying to make it too epic. I didn't. They, yeah, I think they went a little overboard on the thirty-minute throwing people through buildings theme right. uh, thing. Uh, I think somebody had the the numbers of how much damage that they did in the uh, in that end At fight least scene. Six how much billion dollars, damage. right? You're like, hey, I killed this one guy, but yeah, those thirty thousand people that are dead as a result. No, oh, it's okay. <laughs> well, I think the the thing about that is, how is somebody who's strong as Superman and somebody who basically is the same strength as Superman? How would they fight? Their fight would be destructive, right? Of that, course, that's true. I agree, but I got a I got a point to get there. <laughs> but he's trying to save the world, and you know, I mean, if he's this superhero, take it in the freaking air. Don't to take it on the, the ground where you're destroying quote, everyone's homes. To quote and U.S. I think, government's I think they did eventually damage. sort of take it to the air once Zod sort of kind of got the hang of the flying things. Before in the beginning, he was obviously jumping around like like uh, Clark Frog was hopping. in the beginning. <laughs> but you know, then There's once they learned to fly, I think they. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah this this movie was I think dark enough. I think it was almost a little too serious though. I think that was my one of my biggest contentions of it. It well, there was there wasn't really a lot of like happy moments in it. I so, liked the seriousness of it. I'm I, sorry, Rod Jeff. I think they're trying to veer away from because most of the well not most of all of Superman films as of recently are kind of corny. I mean, look at... The same uh, had to be kitschy and, and you know, the same kind of one-liners that, that Superman always had, but, but you know, give a little bit more light to the, you know... I think character. they wanted you to take this character more seriously than um, the other movies portrayed him, because the other movies portrayed him kind of like... Uh, just a corny, like, you remember that horrible movie, Meteor Man? I mean, it could have been Meteor Man. It didn't matter. He was just that campy guy that saved the world, but now they're giving him more of a story, more of a, you know, a reason to to kind of get behind his back and say, okay, this is a good guy. He's a superhero as opposed to some campy guy with three one-liners, you know. He's, he's still, a, the, the character is always going to be a, bo- a Boy Scout. Um, you're never going to have Batman not be. Unless, you know, it's like the other world type of thing. Bizarro world? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, you got any more, Ryan? Or Jeff? Um, I like what they did with the Phantom Zone. Uh, I like the guy who played General Zod a lot. Mm-hmm. I think he was a much better General Zod than uh, the original. <laughs> yes. Reeves. He was in uh, Premium Rush. <laughs> 
the, the he was Michael wasn't Shannon. He? Yep. Uh, he was I the main saw that movie. cop that was the guy bicycle that was movie? after. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. With the was that any good? Gordon it Levitt. was actually really entertaining. I thought it was you know a, a guy in an action movie on a on a ten speed didn't exactly get me to the movie theater. Right. Ring, the ring, way they filmed it though, ring, ring. they really they really did a well job. The way they filmed it, it was like. I don't know. It just it captured all the action. In it's the, the modern day rad racer. <laughs> I was thinking it was the modern day bullet on a ten speed. <laughs> Hell, it's, if anything, it's like the new Tron. I mean, come on. What? Well, Tron. That, the guy that went into the game and faith. was. I know what Tron is. The way he was. Uh, I would say it was Tron in the Can way he was going through the city. Can we just rewind that and go back in time? So, <laughs> hey, don't you like Tron, John? Yes, yeah. I just yeah. think that's kind of like comparing he an apple it. to an orange. Don't jump on the bandwagon. <laughs> you gotta, you gotta stand by your pick there. You, you love Tron, and we think it sucks. Yes, yes. <laughs> but how do you compare Tron to a bicycle? Uh, no, I'm oh, not so comparing it. You're not you, listening. You besmirch the name of Tron. Here's yeah, exactly. how I'm controlling. Uh, here's how I'm comparing it. All I'm comparing is the way that they shot it. That they were moving downtown. So they're moving the quick and kind of lines yeah, and everything. Yeah, the way how okay, it's kind of like. You know. I, I got you. I, I understood where you're going, but John's offended. Yes, I know. <laughs> what, what about you, uh, James? All right, you know, um, I I agree with Ryan in the fact that I for me this movie for a Superman movie this was dark because Superman movies are generally happy go go yay. Puppies but but was it serious or was it dark? I I actually believe this movie was exceptionally serious for a Superman movie. This I movie agree. was slow for like all of it. It was mm-hmm. slow. It was very slow. Do you think it redeemed itself a little bit at the end? No. You know, I, I I'll, get, do. I'll get there in a second. Uh, but what I was going to really make a mention of is I enjoyed uh, the fact that they went into his childhood mm-hmm. and showed some of the development of his powers, like the school scene where he's in school and all of a sudden he's starting to get his x-ray vision to come in. Yeah. And he's looking at his teacher and all of a sudden you see bones and tissue and everything and he's freaking out because he has no idea what's going on. Right. So I thought that was kind of cool, um, except for the fact that I think if he ran up to that door and bounced it like that, that door would have shot would across have the thing. Blew yeah. Up. yeah. Yeah. So there was a couple things that I'm like, all right, his. I don't understand where they're well, what they're trying to say about his powers and strengths and things like that right there. Couldn't you, you know, trying to like a big guy who doesn't know how strong he is, he's trying to figure it all yeah. out. You know, that's what I'm kind of thinking. So if he's like in in elementary school and all of a sudden goes running as fast as he can, I'm assuming he's going to run. As fast as he can, kind of like re- the Lenny right. of Mice and Men. Yeah, he yeah, he, does, he has no power. idea about his strength, you know. And Get it could be excited up on the on the playing field and high five somebody and break his arm. Yeah, and, and they actually did kind of uh, joke about that, and or not really joke, but talk about that in Smallville, mm-hmm. where he he had a couple accidents where he accidentally broke somebody's arm or really injured them. Same on with accident. his eyes. He when he first yeah. got his eye, it was just like boom, everything lit on fire. Yeah. It's like what's going on. So, you know, there was some accidents like that that d- they didn't cover that should have happened. Um, I did not like how they uh, shipped him from Krypton, and then all of a sudden you see it landing by a farm, and all of a sudden, next thing you know, you're on a shipping boat mm-hmm. <laughs> or a fishing boat. You, you know, like how they, I, think, I think that was, I was a little thrown off by that part. We know what the hell happened more or yeah, less, and they, I, they played a lot with flashbacks. And that's what my wife says. She's like, okay, well, I guess they're just kind of saying, well, everybody knows what happened because they've seen Smallville. I'm like, no. Well, I mean, forget about Smallville. I mean, just, you know, like, look, this is – you you know how to fill in the blanks from right right then. Obviously, yeah. Martha and and, uh, and uh, Jonathan. Yeah, I keep um, wanting to say Uncle Ben, but you know, uh, it's um, like long. Group. Yeah, all you guys know how I feel about Superman. Yeah, and audience members out there, you you know what I feel about Superman if you watched the show. Um, well, tell them anyway for the new viewers. <laughs> Goku would rip him apart. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got to say. Anyway, um but you know it comes back to that fact that there was that there was the canon in there that I actually appreciated um when he's fighting the Zod and and his minions that you know they're I have trained my entire life to fight. And what have you done? You know? And Superman really never trains it bugs the crap out of me. And they did do the haymaker. Oh, I can't fight. Pow, pow, pow. Haymaker. <laughs> Miss. Oops. And then smack. And then um, here goes now, the $20 million building. Yeah. Now, my big thing is that if he, if, if you took somebody who fought in high school, let's just say Superman actually fought in high school, which they obviously showed he didn't, and then pit him against soldiers, 
supposedly elite soldiers. What would happen? The guy from high school would die in a minute at the most. That didn't happen again. So Superman he is a need failure. To worry about it. He's bulletproof. Well, look, you know that all so being said, this, this really was probably. I mean, this was the most violent. Oh yeah, Superman yeah. movie that's ever been made. And I'm, and I'm going to get to another part of that. So, you know, uh, that's my big thing is that, you know, Superman, they, they if they want this Superman to do anything, go and learn some martial arts from Batman. Learn something. You don't have to hit Batman, but you can learn how to fight. The other thing, I agree with Jeff 100%. You're fighting some people that are on par with your strength. See, they're, they're learning. They're getting there. Hold on. And you decide... That the best place to fight this person is in the middle of skyscrapers? Mm-hmm. Are you kidding me? Yeah. They didn't really give you him a choice. You must have killed at least a thousand. You have a choice. You, you grab him hair. by his throat or his hair and rip him up into space and fight him out in space. That's yeah, seriously. Well, I don't, um, Take him just, to the moon. Destroy the moon. You're Who destroying cares what, what you're trying to protect <clears throat> while protecting yeah. it. And destroying it at the same time. I mean, he he had more collateral damage than the Twin Towers. Sorry, people in 9-11. But, you know, seriously. Well, that, that's what I was going to say. He yeah, destroyed. Hero, but he killed more than he saved. Exactly. So what were you saying, Ryan, before you were cut off? Well, no, He's saying, saying a lot of things. I don't really... <laughs> in the on. post-9-11 world, people, it seems that that's almost the only way that, that movies can kind of up the ante and yeah. collateral damage anymore is just really by killing an ass ton of civilians. Yeah. I and, mean, and they show it, they sort of gloss over it, but it's not like the A-team where it cuts back and shows everybody getting out of the rubble. Oh, yeah. Uh, you these know. buildings were coming down, crushing, you know, entire city blocks. Hundreds of thousands of people probably died. Well, Thanks to Superman, that. I mean, there is now yeah, dead babies. Yeah. And, and, I mean, countless babies can't billions run. of dollars in, in, in building and property damage. I mean, I they, mean, obviously, it's a fictional city of Metropolis. Okay, sure. But, but like you said, I mean, you know, let, let's take it out to some farmland or something. Yeah, right. take it out somewhere. Go out to the Death Valley, you know. Well, I, mean, I, 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 I will say that not pilgrimage. not all the guys really had. What are you going to destroy a trailer? There was only General Zod that really had his that was really coming up to his power because but the, the chick, chick started to the, you know, the kind of, but they were all kind of weak. That was the only advantage he had was he had he he just had the strength until the end when he snapped his neck. It was just kind of like. And again, on the snapping the neck, you got to think that Superman, since he just went flying through that building, one of his has punches more strength. Have knocked his head off. Has more strength because he's been well, there he, for longer. Yeah, so he's got more strength to break his neck and ensure well, that. Well, not it gets to mention broken. he's not. That's, um, that's what I'm thinking. There, okay, going but he's not fully you like absorbed all the the radiation that he could, so his neck was probably a little easier to break than than you know. No, or, I don't buy it because one. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. One punch from Superman could literally take your head off and send your head flying, right? Well, that's the other thing about uh, what what Superman fans, because uh, I get in an argument with Superman fans continuously. He actually does. I've seen it. Uh, uh, and I always get them to it's finally awesome. shut up after a while, because they <laughs> well, can't argue with me. want to give up. The, the logic is... My, anyway. Um, the point <laughs> is that if <laughs> Superman is fighting somebody who is on par with him, and they always say, well, he's holding back. If the dude is destroying hundreds of thousands of billions of dollars in buildings, yeah. killing hundreds of people by destroying those buildings with the people still in them, because, you know, if you got somebody flying in a building, there's no time to say, oh, my God, Superman's fighting. Evacuate! Evacuate! You Not know. to mention, even if it's on a Sunday, I mean, you know, the building that size, you got 40, 50 cleaning crew hanging out. Yeah. Right. So those people what, are the dead. the help is expendable? If Superman, Apparently. A- as the laser beams is going for these four people, oh my gosh, I just killed 40 people just coming in this building. Let me save these four people, and all of a sudden I'm just going to snap his neck. You don't hold back. You don't hold back. And you honestly, knock his head past true. the moon, like you're saying. I know it makes a movie, but he could have just, earlier on in the movie, been Put like... His hand. <laughs> <laughs> Laser eyes, you're all dead. Okay, yep. end of the story, never started. Yeah, but I like the fact that, that Zod was kind of pulling a joker to me of, you're a Boy Scout, you don't want to kill. To finish this fight, right. you are going to have to kill me. I am going to burn these people, or you kill me. But at the I same time, I kind of enjoyed that. I yeah, enjoyed yeah. that. I thought that was I good. I also thought they kind of brought you a little bit to Zod's side on that, just because in the beginning... You, you know he's the bad guy, but at the same time, it's like, 
He's trying to save a race. He's trying to give you a reason to why he's doing what he's doing. So it's almost well, like, is he a bad guy or is Superman a bad guy for doing this? Well, you I have think he killed Russell Crowe. He's well, a bad guy. Well, I think Superman. <laughs> Superman's always been the character's always been, you know, the the goody goody, you know, truth, yeah, justice, the in the American oh, way. Boy so God. you can't you can't have him be like Zod. He's Superman. Even though he went a little insane, no, by destroying no. an entire city. What they, what they did was give Zod a valid reason for doing what he was doing, right. even though he took it a little too far. Not yeah, even a little too, took it way too far, but <laughs> gave a him a valid let's motivation. Let's do genocide. Well, just really, I mean, most movies will just put you at, like this guy steps on puppies or something. That's why you hate him, right? Yeah, you know, he gave you an actual movie. reason to hate this guy what, or what, to, what, to what's wrong with understand on what was going on, right? As opposed to just. You don't like this guy because you know he's your normal villain. I mean, they kind of they kind of explained his his side of it more than anything. I else like Joker. Joker's Joker? a lot of fun. Well, of course you do, but you're not supposed to be technically, you know, going for him as you would say, what? as you are for. So Harley Quinn. Quinn's cute. So so Ryan, <laughs> that's I'm a personal curious. problem. <laughs> I'm, I'm curious. What did you? What's your rating on this movie? Um, it's a three. Just kind of an average movie. I, I it had good moments. It had slow moments. Um, it was Lots a nice of telling of a story that we all kind of know in a in a in a sort of an updated way, and you know, set it right up for the for the new stuff. I expect all of the the JLA movies are going to be threes until we get to JLA, and then they're going to do something you know probably on par with Avengers. The movie's going to make a billion dollars. Everybody's going to be happy. Okay. What about happy, you, happy, James? Happy. Um. Uh, you know, I kind of agree with Ryan. Is that uh, as far as this movie goes, it's a three. As far as Superman movies, it, I'd give this one around a four, but we're not comparing it to Superman. Yeah, yeah movies, we're just so comparing it's a three. it to those. Yeah. Yeah. If I was comparing it to those, this is the best Superman movie that they've done. But I'll it, agree with you it's on a that. Three. It's 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 the better of the Superman movies. Um, but I was just. Too dis I was disappointed in it personally. I wanted it to be better, so I'm going to give it a two. Uh, you know, I agree with you that I was disappointed by the movie, but if I compare it, because as you said earlier, you're not a fan of the character. I am not a fan of the character either. But if I look at it, if I take a step back, take a step back, and I kind of get over my issues with Superman, I have to give it a three. Well, honestly, though, I I wouldn't say that I'm not into the character. I. have I've watched Smallville. I've watched, you know, I've read uh, the 1945 version of a book called It's Superman. I've, I have watched a lot of Superman. I'm kind of a fan, and that's why I'm disappointed hmm. in it. Just that's because. Interesting. But, well, I guess, you know, if you look at it that way, yeah, maybe the fans of Superman don't like this as much. See, I, I, I like this movie for a couple of reasons. I like the fact it's kind of a darker, more serious take on kind of a goofy character to begin with. And I agree with you. It's a darker. It's a lot darker than all the and other I, I think it's more serious. I didn't see dark. Well, it was, I would it, say the serious. cinematography yeah, was right. Johnny didn't get to. Serious, not well, dark. I think, I, not think it's, I think it's darker depending on which way you look at it. It's darker because I think it's more... You, you get to see the fact... You get to see him struggling. You get to see the fact that he just wants to be left alone. He's scared of the fact that the world discovering him. And then you realize at some point he doesn't have a choice... He so it's so I think that adds the darkness. Well, I don't think it's like a dark, kind of like Dark Knight Rises. It's not oh, traditional, yeah, not but I think it adds to an extra layer of a character that's kind of ambiguous to begin with. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I also like the visuals. I actually think this is a, a Superman that even has kind of a grittier uh, style to it. It's not, you know, it, it it's not uh, like the Christopher Reeves movies, which you know polished yeah. everything pops. Yeah. You know, this had a more organic feel to everything. I felt like I was watching a Michael Bay uh, redo of. See, Superman. I agree with Ryan. I didn't think this the CGI was very much. I mean, you got to expect CGI with Superman. Yeah, but like oh, every I other thought, scene, he's flying through clean. buildings. It looked it looked pretty good. Yeah, I I, I, I have don't to, know. I have to give this movie a three out of five. I, I'm like everybody here. I'm not a big fan of Superman to begin with, but I actually think. Oh, I am is, a big fan. I don't want yeah, to get it wrong. He likes I, the tights. I actually think this is one of the, 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 the better ones made, and I actually like the costume, which is something yeah. I've yeah, never the said. the costume was actually pretty yeah. cool. Because I've never said in my entire life, ooh, I like his costume, because normally it's ridiculous, especially, it, when, it you compare, especially when you compare it. Especially when you compare it to the Batman and the bat suits and all that throughout the years, you know. This one was but definitely I thought you better. liked the Val Kilmer's bat suit. <laughs> I'm skipping that one. 
<laughs> so, <laughs> yes, bat nipples. So, ladies and gentlemen, I we're poke going your to eyes out with my nipples. <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, we're going to the movie news portion of the show, and the one I'm curious about is anybody here like any of the extended edition of the Lord of the Rings? I have no interest. Um, I like I agree. Lord of the Rings, uh, the extended edition. If I want the extended yeah. edition, I'll read the book. So here is the the extended edition of The Hobbit is coming out in quarter three. Four hours? It's I was at, say, right? Well, here's the interesting thing. It adds, like, according to this, it adds, like, an additional 25 minutes of footage. Dear God. Because it adds some in Hobbit, you know, so in the Shire. Six. It adds some in Hobbiton. It adds um, uh, more interactions and get to see when the, the, the when they're with the... Elrond's house. You get to see more interaction. I think it adds a little bit to it. Scenes I think I wish you know, they added I, in. If you if you didn't read the book, you probably won't appreciate those. And even if you did read the book, you're probably going to be a, disappointed by it as well. See, I read. I well, read. If you didn't. I mean, you know, look. If you're into the to the to the canon and the universe, that's that's what all these movies are. Is it just kind of creates a universe that that all these things happen. There's a ton of history. You know what I mean? See, I've yeah. Read, I, I've read I, all the books except for the the Sil Marilyn. I actually like it. There are a few things throughout the uh, Peter Jackson's universe that drive me nuts. But I actually like the extended edition. I, and even I, the I mean, Lord the of the Hobbit was the the thing that got me into Lord of the Rings in the first. But I didn't even know Lord of the Rings was a thing until I was much older. Um, hmm. But the Hobbit, I mean, I love that story so much. And and actually, am, and he's talking about the after seeing the first one, I'm totally down for the next couple. I agree. I'm I'm down for the Hobbitesses, but um, I don't know if I want to watch something that's going to add another 25 minutes to it. I mean, I've read the book. I don't need that. See, I'm really looking forward so, to it because... That's kind of where I'm at. Because here's, here's the thing is the fact Peter Jackson book uh, movie is not the book. I understand that. So and it's yeah, it's a different right. interpretation of a universe which I actually like his interpretation. There's some things that definitely are not in the book and may not even the, the, the back history, but I'm, I'm actually looking forward to buying it, believe it or not. Okay. Well, I... I, I enjoy it. I like him. Uh, it was entertaining, I, it, but I thought it was long enough. It took me a while to get over yeah. uh, uh, Peter Jackson's interpretation of of the universe. The, the universe, uh, but you know, I kind of got over it. And I'm like, you know what? All right, that's fine. That's that's his view of it. But I, I don't need to see another an extra 25 minutes. See, I'm looking. I'll probably want my 25 minutes back. I'm, I'm looking I forward watch to some it. Naruto. It'll be interesting to see what happens because I know uh, was it the Return of the King, the extended editions, additional 45 minutes of footage. Oh yeah. So I'll be interested to see what they end up doing with the next two movies. You know, I was working at Blockbuster when when the, all the Lord of the Rings came out. Um, I was I kept expecting the uh, the final because they kept it coming out with these boxes that were like this big. Right. Oh yeah. It would be the extended. It came with like a little figure. Um, the extended ultimate I, so extended after all three of the movies came out i was really expecting like a six and a half foot uh set with all the <laughs> uh, the movies extended edition and like a you know a three and a half foot right. golem that, that's probably what happens when you stack them all up well that's <laughs> it's just, that's what's going to happen when they have the three ex, uh, three more extended editions you're gonna Pretty, have... yeah with all the hobbit included you have the the three hobbit movies the three lord of the rings movies all that. extended editions like 22 hours of of, uh, of movie they're gonna have like a like a forty foot by twenty foot box that it comes in. And oh, don't yeah. forget about each extended edition on the Return of the on the Lord of the Rings has like you know twelve hours of behind the scenes behind footage the scenes that nobody watches. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's gonna come with an original print of the movie. You know, reel. I've never watched <laughs> any of that. I have movies I have. where they have the behind the scenes. I've watched. I've like put it on on accident. I'm like, what the heck is this crap? See, it, on you Lord know? of the Rings, I actually have. I've actually put it in the background, and some stuff is actually interesting. Um, but you know, I, the, the one that I always found interesting was the, the Braveheart with Mel Gibson. If you do the director commentary through the movie, he's got a really lot of informative crazy how stuff. He was during that. Oh, yeah. I think he's the like, best... you see that guy right there? That's a Jew. <laughs> I think the best movie for extra oh, no. footage. See that chick? Great tits on that chick right there. <laughs> Jeez. For extended you seen her on the casting couch. For extended footage, oh, I think that the again. best uh, Sorry, film is going to be Anchorman because they made a whole second movie out of the extra footage. Uh, did you know that? Yes. Uh, Anchorman. Uh, there's Road. two Anchorman movies sure. out. Uh, if you look on YouTube, there's one called The Lost Movie. And oh, they really? took all the extra footage from the movie and they actually made another 
two hour film and That's it's completely different has different actors i mean it still has your main oh, wait, no key people in there yeah no will ferrell and all oh, them are in there dang. but it's, it's a completely different plot oh, and there's like different Funny. actors that are in the anchorman i mean it's like a completely different movie i'm gonna have to find that so yeah look up the lost uh lost movie from anchorman it's actually pretty funny okay and so for the my movie pick <laughs> next week i'm going to do the tuskegee airmen made in 1995 okay wow, wow. Nice. so this is it's pulled it out it's uh it's similar to i guess the red tails that came out this year but it's the better one i thought it's it was the better year. one it's the original two years ago yeah. was it two years ago red tails came out Actually, yeah, it's probably like recently okay. within the last yeah, couple recently. of years. Yeah, recently. Since 2000. <laughs> and it has the same actors in it, so. Really? You know, this whole Tuskegee yeah. Airmen thing, I think it was run into the ground. I mean, how many times you can tell that damn story? <laughs> well, they've only made, what, three movies out of it? <laughs> Two. And, like, Two? you know, okay. 18 there was documentaries. and Oh, documentaries don't count as movies. Yeah, nobody watches documentaries. Yeah, yeah well, so, what are you talking about? So, oh, excuse la- me. Ladies and gentlemen, I gave... <laughs> this is a film documentary show. So, ladies and gentlemen, I gave the movie Man of Steel a 3 to 5. James gave it a 3 to 5. Ryan gave it a 3 to 5. And Jeff Michaels gave it to The Reluctant 2 out of 5. So we'll see you next week. Deuces. Deuces.